Now, the past 15 years have been tough for the world economy. Every country has endured the shocks of global financial crisis, the global pandemic, and the devastating impact of the war in Ukraine on energy and food prices. Yet since 2010, in the crucial variables of investment and productivity, Britain has done consistently worse than comparable countries. Since 2010, year on year, investment as a share of UK GDP has been the lowest in the G7 every year. On productivity, in a comprehensive study by the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, this was argued, and I quote, in the years leading to the global financial crisis, the UK was closing the gap on its international competitors. UK productivity was growing at a faster pace than the United States in the pre-2007 period. This has changed since 2007, with productivity growth rates collapsing in the UK, more so than in most advanced countries." Unquote. Now, the result of this succession of low productivity and low investment is that in 2009, the typical household incomes in Britain were roughly the same as in France and Germany. Ten years later, household incomes are 16% lower than in Germany and 9% lower than in France. The persistent economic underperformance of the past decade is the key to why Britain is today locked into low growth and high inflation with ever-rising taxes and interest rates, and also why the public realm is in an advanced state of breakdown as despairing public sector workers suffer even more severe cuts in real income. Yeah. But why? Why has this happened? Well, the explanation is not hard to find. In the face of every major shock suffered by the economy over the past 13 years, the government has time after time taken the wrong decision. In every case, misguided government policies damaged investment, damaged growth, and damaged productivity. In the first half of 2010, the UK economy was recovering strongly from the shock of the global financial crisis. But the cost of rescuing the banks and supporting the economy in the downturn had left the UK with a high level of debt relative to GDP. Now, any serious study of economic history demonstrates beyond doubt that the only enduring way to reduce the debt to GDP ratio is to grow GDP. Accordingly, in the first half of 2010, the Chancellor, Alistair Darling, had steered the economy onto a steady growth path approaching an annual growth rate of 3%. In May of that year, the new Chancellor, George Osborne, reversed Darling's policy, and austerity killed the growth rate stone dead. Austerity was supposed to cut the debt. The trouble was that it cut GDP too. To the Chancellor's continuing puzzlement, despite his having eviscerated public spending, the debt-GDP ratio did not fall as predicted. He had chosen the wrong policy. The damage that Osborne's austerity did to the foundations and growth of, of growth and productivity lives on to this very day. Now, the next major economic shock to the UK was the vote to leave the European Union just seven years ago. Following the referendum result, the Conservative government took the wrong decision once again. Instead of negotiating post-Brexit a close relationship with our largest trading partner, they decided on so-called hard Brexit, raising trade barriers and exiting supply chains. The result? Since the referendum, whilst the value of French exports have grown by 16% and German exports by 23%, 
In the same period, demand for UK exports has grown by just 6%. And the growth of business investment in Britain that had shown a sharp recovery in the three years before 2016 stopped dead and has never fully recovered to this day. That's what happens when you make the wrong decision, when you give up the supreme trading advantages of close proximity to the world's largest free trade area. Next came the double whammy of the pandemic and the war in the Ukraine. The new government, led by Liz Truss, correctly identified Britain's fundamental economic weakness, the slow rate of growth. But once again, the Conservative government chose the wrong policy. In this case, fiscal incontinence. Instead of tackling directly the low investment, low growth problem, they sprayed tax cuts, or planned to spray tax cuts, on the better off. They ignored the fact that similar tax cuts for the wealthy by Donald Trump had had no lasting impact on US growth. The result of that conservative mini-budget has been soaring interest rates and a collapsing confidence, hammering investment and growth yet again. The 7 million plus NHS waiting lists, the 2 million plus fall in the labor force, the world beating rate of inflation and spiraling mortgage rates are all the result of a succession of bad policy choices made by conservative ministers at crucial times in the past 13 years. Yeah.